Alrighty, so I would like to call the meeting to order at um, 6.04 and I'd like to get started first, I know it's on the agenda, um, but by introducing our two student board members or asking them to introduce themselves, <laughs> so take it away. I'm Sienna Valencourt, I'm a junior. I'm Lily Hudson, and I'm a junior too. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, ladies. How were you chosen? We were elected. Okay. Wonderful. All right. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? Anything we should add? Do they know who we are? Would you like us to introduce ourselves? Especially because we're on camera, that'd be good. Can't do camera. Jazz hands. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Lisa Floyd, the chair of the White River Region Union District. First Labs, the superintendent, just a minute ago. Owen Bradley's White River Valley Middle School principal. Andrew Bowen, Bethel Elementary principal. <laughs> David Wells, South Burlington Elementary principal. Reed McCracken, high school principal. I'm Kelly I'm the business manager for the Supervisory Union. Rodney Rainville, board member. Shannon Morrill Cornelius, I'm a board member. Lisa McCrory, board member. Yeah. Thank you all. All right. No adjustments to the agenda? I'd just like to point something out, Madam Chairwoman. John Hubble is here to speak about the Bethel heating system. Okay. So just so you know why he's here. Okay, for the boiler update. That's on Heating the agenda. System. Heating system. Okay. Probably more accurate. Okay. More oh, sorry. No, you're fine. Okay. And that's going to be part Thank of you. what part of the notes? That's or down on 9.1. Okay. And if you, under adjustments to the agenda, if you'd like to change that to heating system update. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hear that and send from home, or yeah, we can we can definitely move that up Sign to. Um, we'll move that up to four, and we'll bump, bump public comment to after that. If that's okay with with you. Okay. Um, assign times and a timekeeper. Who would like to be our timekeeper? <clears throat> Oh, I am experienced. <laughs> so our timekeeper is Rodney Rainville. I'm working on his resume. <laughs> okay. Um, and I feel like if we could keep all sections to under 15 minutes, that's reasonable. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Okay, so heating system update. Well, Thank you. Who don't remember who went in with John Hubble and after the Bethel, Mr. Bradley and Mrs. Paul and asked me to come over and give you kind of an update on what's going on with our heating system. Uh, I've been working with Alliance. They have been, I think the issue was before that there was a, a fear that there may have been a lot of moisture water in the thermostat. Well, come to find out, fortunately enough for us, there wasn't really that much. There haven't been, there have been some thermostats that needed to be replaced, but nearly not what we expected from them. Good. So I'm working with them and they have just about completed the installation of the new thermostat with the exception of Pratt Warner 2, which is on order and will be coming at any day now, hopefully. They, uh, I ran the furnace all day today, and, or a goodly portion of the morning for, the, for this morning, and I went around to each one of the individual teachers to find out whether or not they were comfortable, what sort of uh, expectations they had, and I noticed the Alliance had spent a goodly amount of time in calibrating all the thermostats. And I would say that we averaged just between 68 and 70. It was perfect throughout the building. That's awesome. Yep. So I, I guess I kind of maybe jumped the gun 
the last time I was here, but boy, I hate you to say that in a meeting like this. Was <laughs> that in my lifetime? Something always happens. You know? <laughs> well, it is worrisome when we're thinking about heating well, the building for all of the community's children. Yes, ma'am. So I appreciate that, okay. um, and I appreciate that we're at a place where we know that it's working successfully. And as soon as we get the audit report and we know the funds available, we'll think of a more proactive plan to be in a good place for next year. Did, did Alliance do any report on the condition of the heating system? Uh, as far as the boilers go, they're there. very happy with the condition of the boilers. One's uh, 92 and the other is 89 years old, or uh, constructed in that year. In that year. Yeah. And they seem to think uh, we had, when we cleaned them out this spring, there was quite a bit of particulate and stuff, fine ash that had to be removed from it. But we did that successfully, and I think they're, they're quite happy with the condition of it. Uh, Any other questions? So at this point, the concerns really were the water and the thermostats last, what I was last meeting. Overly concerned and you were worried that if the water was in there, the thermostats wouldn't work, the rooms wouldn't get heat because the right. system wouldn't recognize it. But now you've identified just a couple. Hopefully of that's been taken care of and with not too much further ado. Good, good. <laughs> That's not to say that there isn't a sense of urgency in to address how we deal with the rest of it. <clears throat> well, you have to remember that that system is almost 60 years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you really, we really should be thinking about replacement. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And we are. All right. That's the plan. Are we good with Mr. Hobble? Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. Thank you, John. Yes, sir. All right. That moves us Stay on school. to public comment. Um, I said 15 minutes for each section. Right. Not, Not too exciting. Exciting. You're going to report on yeah. the amount of time? Well, we, that was three minutes. Okay. okay. We can't see not to exceed 15 minutes per section. So. Yeah. All right. Public comment. Hearing none, we'll move on. That was much interesting. There's somebody coming. coming through the door. Oh. I could set Terry up by saying that there is a consultant working with music teachers. We That's talked a new about thing. that last time, though. All right. Public comment literally just came in as I said it, and there was no one, and now you're here, so I feel like I should say it again. Not the designated public comment, please. <laughs> <laughs> fine. All right, thank you. Okay, um, attached to this packet, you'll see minutes from our previous meetings. Um, and I would entertain a, a motion to um, approve them as one consent agenda if people feel comfortable with them. And we pass this down. Mm -hmm. When do the board members receive the packet? Um, usually board members receive the minutes within a couple of days of the meetings. So would these board members receive them? Yes, we can ask Christy to add them to the list. We'll need your emails if you could maybe write them in the sign-in notepad. Then we could um, <coughs> pass that on to Christy and ask, him, ask her to include you guys. I'm sure Christy has your student emails, right? Well, let's... Okay. Will you put in the minutes that they need to, they need to be added mm -hmm. as well, please? Yeah. Okay. okay. And you can share that with the cemetery because that list is finished. I make a motion to approve the minutes as a consent agenda. Okay. Block. I second the motion. Okay, all in favor of approving the minutes as a single consent agenda say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Um, do we have anything for board comment? Okay. Um, we're on to reports to the board. 
um, the business manager's report. Auditors are here for week three. We've been plugging along, getting information that they need to complete their process. So that's still my primary focus right now. Um, I did receive an inquiry from Orange County Parent Child Center. Uh, they did some reconciliation of their pre-K tuition Mm -hmm. And it was discovered that invoices were not submitted to White River Unified District for several of their months, totaling $2,874.98. And I advise that because it's outside of the time frame allowed in the partnership agreement that I would need to come to you as the board to determine if you're willing to pay those invoices or not. So are those White River Union District or White River Valley Unified District? White River Valley Unified District. These are your I'm sorry, the whole SU or just no, us? these are just yours. Just that they didn't send the invoices for your school, for your kiddos that are coming to Orange County. And um, when were those invoices, when should they have been submitted? And what invoices are due by the 15th of the month and paid by the 15th of the following month and according to the partnership agreement this is i just learned this all from the pre-k coordinator transition um, the invoices should have all been submitted by the end of june but they had turned over in their position also at orange county so they were trying to do the reconciliation it took them some time to get through that okay and the total value again two thousand eight hundred seventy four dollars and ninety eight cents so this is the last year. Yeah, so this is paying for pre-K students that didn't come to our place. That that to right. yep. And theoretically we should be counting those in our student account, right? So that we get yes. we get some money that then gets pulled on to them. Do we know if those students were counted? I the pre-K students weren't counted the same way that they're going to be counted now, so I couldn't tell you specifically if they were counted. Need to make sure in the but it's paid right yeah it's paid for through the pre-k program pre they have to go to a, according to the partnership agreement they have to be a member of the partnership and they have to meet the conditions that are required right. to get the 10 hours of public pre-k assistance right. so that's what this is and we get some <coughs> reimbursement from the state for that correct <coughs> i believe so but i would need to double check on that because yeah. i don't know if that's all connected to the I think, I think we keep that count them as equalized peoples or something like that. Okay. And, and I know they are counted in your ADM. They're like a point four, yeah, right. point four six. But. They're a fraction. Yeah. But Andrew, I think that's a good question. Um, if they didn't bill um, us for them, they might not have submitted their attendance, and it might be like they were, they might not be on the books. Right. So we, I think we should. Re I would recommend we research that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and I don't know who. Do you know Bruce who was who tracked that prior to this? Because it's all done through the collaborative. Um, so I'm not sure. Um, I can't figure it out. I just don't know yeah, how it works. Yeah. So I would make a motion that if they were students that we were compensated for, that we hold them. <coughs> like I don't know how to make the motion, but. Like, can we make approve we this request now? as long as the, um, <coughs> the paperwork? Is done? As long as we were able to count them. Right. Yeah. Well, if, well, if, yeah. Maybe we should just revisit it just like the, after it's actually been investigated. Okay. So, do you want to make a motion, or do we want to? I don't think you need to do a motion. I no, think you can tell me, you figure you it out, and let us know. Okay. Oh, I don't think it needs well, to be that official. But I was thinking that you could just do it if it is. No, I'll report it back. I'll send it to you via email. Once I have. Great. Okay. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Anything else in your report? I am working with the principals on next year's budget. Okay. Okay. That's all I got. Um, so I've been, I wonder too, I know that you've been working on a plan to um, have Maryland work less. Um, I just wondered if there's any progress related to hiring people to help. I have office. not wrote the ad to go in the paper because we are still, as the leadership team within the central office, determining what our transition plan is going to be. So we had a meeting on it today and we will okay. follow that up. 
Is there any timeline related to that plan? I uh, hope to have a draft transition for the executive board meeting on the 28th. Okay. I think this is an aspirational document. It's something that we want to become. And there has to be multiple steps in order to get there mm -hmm. over probably multiple budgets to get there. Um, we have several, we have report on several of the people in the current business department that will, will may be retiring in the next year or two years. And we have to consider that. And, uh, exactly what we have. We've engaged the uh, auditors in this uh, because they have a really good handle on what we need uh, going forward uh, within, with our, within our budgets. And uh, so basically that's what we met about today. I would like to be able to show the executive board and after that, the rest of the members of the boards uh, exactly where we're going with this. Uh, over a period of time instead of just trying to satisfy the moment. Yeah, we can't put a band-aid on it right now. Yeah. We need to, several things have transpired over the last two weeks that have okay. brought lots of things to the table. So, so you're, you know, for the sake of the notes, you're going to have a plan? A draft plan. transition okay. plan mm -hmm. for the executive board meeting on the 28th. I guess my, and, and can you tell me exactly what this plan is, re, uh, is it for staffing, staffing, in staff? the, staffing in the business office? Okay. Future staffing in the business office. And I guess my, uh, I, that's exciting to me that there's a transition plan being developed and that we're thinking big picture. Um, I guess I'm just worried about the level of burnout that we've seen over the last two years and that if staffing isn't where we need it to be. Um, that we'll continue to see that trend. So I appreciate the work you're doing right now. Uh, just on the next year's budget, as you're going through the process, and I know like we wound up with some things where <coughs> things got coded differently than what they were kind of budgeted as. So just as you're going through the process with the principals, make sure you guys are on the same page as to what everything is. <laughs> That continues to be a working progress. Yes, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have a few more questions. Shannon, yes. So I know that last year we had all kinds of a mess with attendance and how many students did we have, and the state system was a mess. And then it turns out in Rochester, it was who knows how they were counting people. <laughs> how how is that going forward? I, I want our community to be as confident as possible that we are counting students, we're counting them correctly, we're reaching out and finding all the students who are you know, these preschoolers who we should be counting. What is happening with those numbers yeah. and with that all process? All the administrative assistants were in the office last Wednesday. They went through the web to school training with Ray, which is what drives the information that gets reported to the SLDS system to the state. Once that official enrollment file goes up November 15th, the state starts running ADM reports daily, and we can go in, we can pull those reports, and we can confirm those reports and confirm our students. The challenge that we're going to have is in districts that are sending districts, if the students are not appropriately coded to the right residence, or residence C, it can skew our numbers, which is what we discovered was happening in the Rochester and Stockbridge situation. It wasn't anything that was done on our end on several of the students. It was actually the schools receiving them that are responsible to report that information. So I worked with Jen Perry on a plan on how, once that system starts to generate that, how we can track it and check that. So we have checks and balances in place that hopefully will prevent that from happening again. We can't make any promises. It's a work in progress at the state level and the preschool report was just released today as to how we have to report them up separately. So it's what, what this is <coughs> What this has done is, is we learned an awful lot from it. We also, you are not as vulnerable for some of those kids because you don't tuition out. And uh, we couldn't have foreseen what went on. Kids showing up to out of district uh, tuition receiving towns. Uh, but in, in the case of this district, you're not vulnerable to that because you, you keep your kids here. And, uh, and it's, so it's not so much an issue. But uh, I think uh, 
We learned a lot. I think the state learned a lot about all of this. They, they, they're trying to transition to a computerized system, and you're only as good with your data as the people that are putting it in. Yeah. So they need to be well trained in order to be able to make sure we don't make those errors. Okay. Uh, I think we have a really good handle on Rochester and Stockbridge now because we really went student by student, address by address, making sure we knew where every one of them were. And by the way, their tax that they had uh, assessment that they had approved by the voters went down after this this happened because we, we came out a little better. They got under the cap. They also have to, you know, have, have not as much money as, re as they thought was going to be required. So they had how many students? I'm, I'm forgetting this now. I don't uh, have it in my head anymore. It's long gone. Credited for, you know, in a, in a district like Rochester Stockers, mm -hmm. one student makes a huge amount of difference. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not so much the case here. It is the case here, but not so much as we have to do so much smaller. As long as there's no feeling that we need to go through our numbers, student by student, I, you know, that all happened long after the rest of the towns in the SU had sort of settled everything out. So that's just kind of... Thank you. All right, that brings us to our superintendent's report. Not on the list, but I wanted to just tell you we have a new hire in uh, Jan Crow, who's a preschool coordinator. She's working uh, two and a half days a week, part time, replacing Karen Flett. Uh, they've done some transition work together, and Jen, uh, Jan is uh, very experienced, having worked in the Windsor district over a number of years. She's probably got 30 years in. Uh, so it, we kind of really lucked out in finding her. Uh, and she's jumped right in and, and is working now in the office. Um, I'll send, send these around. You're probably going to have to share because I don't think I have enough for everybody. And don't disregard the top of it where it says Keensburg School District because this is an example of the chain of command uh, document that we would like to have under our under our heading uh, going forward. I've been carrying this around for about two years, hoping that we could pass a policy which is in the works right now and also uh, put this up on the web describing exactly how to access uh, people. I thought it was a good representation of, of how it should go. Turns out that Owen just informed me that he graduated from this school district in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, so out. I'm wondering yeah. maybe if I should tear this up and maybe start again. Mm -hmm. I moved. I left there when I was 12 years old. My parents still haven't found me. <coughs> it's a good example of, of uh, you know, if you're looking for a cause, you're not going to get it. <laughs> um, it's a good example of how we might organize this, and I'd like to do it for each of the districts. Mm -hmm. So I've asked a lot of the principals, uh, I believe, have seen this, and uh, they've tried to organize their own structure using the names that they have and numbers and so on and so forth. So it's just an example for you. Uh, Keensburg is in New Jersey, and it's, uh, they must have a lot of problems with chain of command because they seem to do this very well. So they organize it. Right, so we would have, ours would be different in terms of... Names. Right, Andra being the last person before um, the superintendent on the Bethel Elementary campus. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. right, and we don't have a director. No, of some of these things are Chief not. academic right. officer, right. So that makes sense. So I think Bree drafted one. Yeah, he's got a Google Doc, and I, okay. I don't know whether everybody's added to it or not, but we're going to... I just took my name off the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get any phone calls, right? Yes. So anyway, i just give you that as an example. Um, Burgess Support Grants, actually Tara and I spent quite a bit of time out trying to find 
the notes around this. We finally tracked down uh, the meeting when it was, and it turns out that Tara did have some notes on uh, the decision having to do this. I, I recall July 25th or June 25th? I think it was June 25th. June 2018. Board meeting. Do you have that total? I know what it is. Oh, rough I figures. Not that folder on my desk, but it's roughly eighty thousand. Right. And last year we wanted to access funds for field trips. No one has touched it. Right. There's no process. Right. And we the tried reason and we that asked, and we've asked for that. Well, it needs to be done with the executive board or the full board right. somehow. And uh, I now have we now have a request. For from Rochester and Stockbridge to access those funds, but because we don't have any mechanism, I don't know what to tell them. But we also have one other that has now came forward that is still truly merger expenditures. Well, and we asked last spring um, for funds to be released for the trips that are at our merged middle school. So at the fifth grade level, bringing those groups together to nature's classroom, and the eighth grade field trip to Washington, D.C. Because I was at the full board meeting where we said that we weren't going to ad allocate them through to specific schools and we weren't going to divide them up like pie based on your percentage of students, et cetera, in the district. But instead, we were going to look for things that were like added value for students and so I would submit that our request came in quite some time ago. So I think we need to establish a process for that fund, but when I say we, it's the executive board slash full board right. needs to make that decision on how those funds are now going to be handled moving forward. If that means that you submit an official proposal to the board, they approve it, whatnot. I think the struggle is that it's not a representative entity. So at the point that I made the request last year at the full board, it was tabled until we had a process. And so it's like a dog chasing its own tail. Well, we will have a process developed at this next executive board meeting, because uh, I guess. Because <laughs> I'm in favor of dividing it up like pie if we can't come up with a better process. <laughs> But I mean, otherwise, the money's have, still there. I we want you have forty-six percent that be ours. There are still merger expenditures that are still being legal fees. That one, they were both. Still, it was student I mean, we issues and also merger expenditures. Right. Yeah. For property transfers that have not occurred yet. So. And then you have to consider where is Stratford and, and Sharon in all of this in because the they didn't merge. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't have expenses. So. <laughs> But they didn't well, have expenses. I'm, I'm sorry. Like we're having this again. Merger <laughs> support would be so divided up. unneeded. They didn't merge. So yeah. What was it? Executive board at the end of this month? October 28th. 28th. Okay. I will be there. Executive board meeting. So please so come. We have a no. full agenda. So we're yeah. making sure that that will be on the agenda for the next. Yep. Yep. Where's the meeting? Is it at the SU? It's at mm -hmm. the SU. Okay. And that's for the executive board? Yeah. Okay. And that's next week? The 28th. Mm -hmm. Is that next week? You're also no, going no, to have our... After. Cool, don't rush it on. We're going to have our that uh, <laughs> auditors will re be reporting out that night. Great. So uh, they will be in attendance and we'll be reporting out. Just Rod, I believe, the other one Well, he's the head guy, so... Awesome. All right, thank you. Um, are you reporting on behalf of the director of special services? So if you look in your packet, uh, the third, I think the third from the last page, uh, under the new, uh, if you know anything about Act 173, um, that is a um, way of changing the way uh, districts uh, use the money and special ed and, and that kind of thing. So uh, there have been some comments made recently um, that part of the process is that we should allot some money up for those kids placed, in, placed out of district for their general education because not all of the work they do at these placements has to do with, with special needs 
uh, issues that there should be some general funds or a lot of general funds that will be charged to each of the districts that send those kids out of district. We've been told by the secretary uh, to start to create our own programs. And if you look at uh, the memorandum on the next page, uh, it really explains um, this idea of carving out some money from each of the districts. We have, there's also a list of out of district placements for uh, each of the districts in the SU and how many kids are out, uh, <coughs> what the cost per student is that we, it, there's not really, I had a conversation at my Winooski Valley meeting on Friday and there's a wide variance between superintendents of how they're gonna handle this. Um, whether some of, some of them are not too excited about getting involved in this because we haven't had real clear guidance yet. What Deb is doing is taking the district average for uh, state average for tuition uh, around the state, uh, 15,933, and applying it to each one of these kids and then assessing each of the districts that have those kids. Uh, you having the most because you have uh, um, 17 kids out in placements somewhere. Some of those kids are eligible to come back, but we don't have space for them. Um, others probably won't come back, but nobody's given us guidance on how much money we should set aside. And so Deb said, well, I'm just going to do what the state average is and we'll see how that goes. It's a, it's a huge cost to your budget about that and I'm not quite sure that that's enough because we don't have the guidance. So, uh, and some of my fellow superintendents have gotten clarification on this far more, far more than the state average is what they're looking for us to do. Um, and I think the my fellow superintendents feel like until we get clarification on what this is, we're gonna go status quo for this next budget. Mm -hmm on doing this. Um, and it goes hand in hand with what the secretary has said, you guys need to start working on your own local programs because it's gonna be under Act 173, you're not gonna have the funds to send kids out of district at expensive places. And on the back of that list, it gives you some idea about um, the exposure that you will have depending on where these kids go. And uh, you know, they go all the way from the new school at 123,000 a year to uh, Raven at 30 or 25,000. So, and usually boards don't set where these kids go. It's IEP teams mm -hmm. making decisions on that. So, so potentially we could we have savings with the restorative classroom related to East Valley Academy and Raven. Those are typically or. We don't have a high school model yet for restorative classroom, which Raven might, if we had the hands-on project-based component. Be uh, I've been talking to that. I've been yeah. talking to uh, Central Vermont, which is Williamstown Northfield, and also with Randolph about partnering on a high, alternative high school for those kids, because those are the ones that are still out uh, that we can't bring back because we don't have a program. Uh, or we need to change our own programming at the high school level to be able to accept those kids back and have, when you're facing a couple hundred thousand dollars in cost, maybe it's more efficient to bring them back and support them in our own program as long as. So this is, this is an, an issue that's going to heat up, uh, especially when the legislature comes back, but probably before that because we're getting various opinions on how much exposure we're going to have in the next budget related to this problem. When we met with the uh, secretary uh, about three weeks ago, he looked at us all and he said, are you ready for Act 173? <coughs> and I turned to him and I said, are you ready for Act 173? <laughs> because unless you guys support us, it's going to be very hard going to, to put these on the locals, basically these costs on the locals. Mm -hmm. So. 
Um, this is a very popular topic at our business managers meeting on Friday as well, about how business managers are handling it. For this district, it's $270,000. So I'm not being to sneeze about it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so I'll just to clarify, the students that we're sending out, do we currently count them in our student numbers? I believe so, yes. Okay. All right. Because that would be money that would, and then we, then they get paid for these placements that are currently getting paid for out of the special education budget that it takes to and some percentage of that is reimbursed by the state. Some some of that is is reimbursed, but then we get depending on how costly the the placement is, we get some uh, catastrophic aid over and above. I don't know whether that's the right term for it, but it's for the most difficult kids and the most costly kids. We get a high, ramped up right. percentage of uh, state aid for that. And so the change would be that we need to allocate kind of this cost per student out of our local budget and the remainder would be still be in the um, special education budget. The, the rub here is that what Deb is forecasting is a number that we're not sure about, 15,900. Right. I'm just going over, like, it does, I don't care about the actual number. I just want to know what you think is what it's going to yeah, so be what, what we need to do. What they're trying to do is the general ed cost for students that are placed outside of their districts are the responsibility of right. the local budgets and then only the special education services right. that are provided get paid for by the special education program. The challenge there is the agency of education can't give clear guidance as to what that general ed cost number is. Right. The report that we saw on Friday ranged from $30,000 to over $100,000 just for the general ed cost side right. of things. So that's where they really need to give some clarification because this could be a severely under budgeted number and sure. then as several business managers said on Friday, then we end up in a deficit spend situation because we didn't use the right number for general ed. Sure. So, that's so on a per student basis, it could cost function. up to twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars a student in actual cost. Yeah. So the independent the schools have to submit to the agency of education their breakout of general ed versus special education, and so that's where the AOE then has to figure out: Are they going to use an average? Are they going to use a percentage? What that guidance is, and that hasn't been released yet. And the reimbursement only happens if the student is on an IEP. Uh, yes, we, we take mm -hmm. 504 kids into the restorative program, but point out, uh, we do, I think we do have some kids that are on 504s that are out. Right. But we don't get the same reimbursement. No. But we don't get the it's same reimbursement. Right. Right. right, right. It's regular ed for that. So yeah. I just think that. I'm just thinking back to last year at our annual meeting where people were curious about those percentages of the students I think it's we were placing out that didn't qualify for special education but we sent out because it's the right academic placement for sure um yeah and like yeah, i'd be curious to know what <coughs> reimbursement was for each of these categories anyway because you know, we're going to be adding fifteen or sixteen thousand dollars, or whatever the number winds up being, to our local budget. But that's coming out of the SU budget, so like the special education assessment is going to be smaller for the SU portion of the budget. So you know, is it, are we actually going to be adding, you know, two hundred and seventy, or is it going to be more? Like, <coughs> that's going to be offset some by the special education costs coming down. So like, what's the actual percentage difference going to be? The Anyway, the, uh, I realize we don't have to do this for next, we don't have to do this for this upcoming budget cycle, but it'd be for the fall. Right. Um, well, I, I'm expect most of the superintendents sitting around the table were going status quo. They weren't even bugging in the 15-9. Right. I don't know, the, the report or the, I mean, the budget. What it says here is that SUs that do not currently allocate general versus special, special education as a matter will have one additional year. So is that additional year this upcoming budget cycle? Yes. If so, we should definitely take advantage of that. Um, 
what else. Yeah. But, I mean, you I know, think the report, ahead, that good. Deb's reports to the state on on expenditures, I think, are due today. Yes. And, and she's put hers in like last Thursday. Okay. Uh, we're, but they may get kicked back to us. I don't know. Uh, nobody's well, given us. I mean, I guess I'm trying to find out whether this one additional year is the current school year or next school. I year. think it would be next school year, but. Again, most of the superintendents sitting around the table right. are not doing anything. Well, just to clarify, next school year that it goes into effect, or next school year that we can have one additional year is the next school year that is the additional year. I think it would probably be 21-22. Okay. That's, okay. that's what is I that to be clear enough? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, well it could be continued because it could change. Yeah, right. that's it. We have <laughs> I mean, it's, so, you know, I, these are all hypotheticals. Yeah. We'll definitely take the extra year if we get it. <laughs> right, because we need to not bring in an increase this year. Yeah. And with health insurance, et cetera, I'm already anxious. So mm -hmm. this, this uh, probably won't go into play until the 21-22 school year. Is that we, the, we hope not, oh. although I was talking to the current special, or the my superintendent group, and they haven't, we at least have tried to show good good faith and put yeah. something in. They haven't done this. When those reports get to the AOE and they see that, what happens next? Um, are they going to say, you know, we told you to make a good faith effort towards this? The problem is, unless somebody can give us clarity around this, I have seen a couple letters that the AOE has sent back to superintendents saying, no, this is what your general ed cost should be pulled out for. We saw two letters from one of the superintendents. So if you put this in what you're sending to them, are they going to expect us to pay this then? I mean, can we not submit this we this can, way? We, we've already submitted, but we can change it. Okay. So, I mean, if, if this is what we submit and then we wind up having to pay it, even though we could have had an extra year, that would be a problem. No, we can, I, I asked Deb that, why did we put this in if we we're going to be the only ones doing it? And she said, well, we can make some alterations right on. at some yeah. point. I, you know, this is not pretty news for anybody. I mean. Um, it really, it really shoots a hole in the state funding, sure. uh, and her budget, the special ed budget, went down because much of this is being thrown on the local budget. So, you know, it just seems to get this information. It's nice to have it way in advance so that we could plan a budget around it. And this is a, it makes us look bad as a board, like we're not sharing enough information to the general public when clearly these are getting thrown at us, you know, out of the blue with no no opportunity to plan. When you mm -hmm. do your budget, we'll have definitive information because all the reports have, will be in and there will be clarification because there's real confusion right now. Right. So you'll have it by the time your budget gets to that one. We, we hope. The AOE is still down, what, 28 FTEs or more? So, what is that? They are short staffed by at least 28 people, at least. And why aren't they filling those positions? Nobody wants to go uh, there. Sorry. But I think they're very challenging to fill. This has been going on for a while. Yeah, well, I maybe mean, now it, that it gets out, maybe people will <laughs> fly. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yep. Yeah, well, I just think it's challenging. Yeah. Uh, they're they're this, uh, being asked to do more with less, like many agencies. Uh, when this is applied to whatever, either this budget cycle or next time, when we do have to do it, do make an estimate of how it's going to change the SU special education assessments so that we have to get into. I also want to tell you guys, you're not helpless in this. You can contact people. Right. You know, and speak out if you're, if right. you're you know, as we get closer to that budget and, and see how it's going to impact. I expect we'll get some clarity around this now that the special ed uh, reports have been in, uh, financial reports have been in uh, for next year. So, 
Sorry, sorry to break bad news. I don't know whether this is bad or not. Yeah. It might be. How are we doing time-wise? That was more than 15 minutes. Right? Well, but we did like three groups. So, uh, it's just 49. We're down to principal's report. Okay, thank you. All right. So it was 20 minutes when we did three sections. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, so awesome. All right. So the principal's report is emailed to us. Um, can we make a note to add Fiona and um, Lily to the principal's report? I want to put it up. We have, have copies of the principal's report for you to look at, okay. so you don't have to pull it up. Since it was late okay. and coming. Oh. So if you pull it up, you can link to the link. Yeah, first link by the board. Or it doesn't work. work. If, I what? mean, I have permission. We will it fix it. It was corrected 45 minutes ago. Oh, oh that is helpful. Yeah. 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 Uh, we discovered that yeah. dead link yeah. 45 yeah. minutes ago. And we want to see who's reading. <laughs> Your diary. Yeah, the, the so administrative. So, so the, the administrative, administrative goals was. Uh, I think it's that link works so. now. It I be. didn't get it to work, but again, it needs to work on my phone. And the last one might be three documents deep. It just goes up. <laughs> Do you want one of these, uh, Bridget? One of the. No, no, no. Copies? I got, I got this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's it's the it's the first link, the unified 2019. I'll triple check. Yeah, it's not working. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I need to print out the goals. I don't need to. Okay. All right. Do you want to give it over here? Yeah, that would be awesome. We'll just sign this up. Um. So as we shared with you, I think at the end of last spring, uh, we are working with a consultant, Peter Clark, who's a seasoned Vermont uh, <laughs> principal, former principal, been principal of a number of schools, and uh, trained by the state as a mentor. Uh, he happens to be my mentor. Um, he, uh, somebody who worked, uh, who Owen worked for many years ago in Montpelier. Uh, so we have some connections to him. And anyways, he's been kind of leading us through a process of doing some uh, visioning and uh, goal work uh, collectively as the, the four of us. And the short version of this is uh, we have four goals for ourselves for the district for this year. The first is to work on forming an identity for the merged schools. Um, so what, we've had two joint meetings so far this year, uh, which is two more than we had last year, uh, sh not including SU-wide meetings where we're together with everybody. Um, and we'll have our next one in December. Um, and an example of some of the work we're doing together is the Alice Active Shooter Training, which we did back in September. Um, and we're doing trauma-informed learning uh, work together. Uh, some of it we're doing on our own campuses, and some of us we're coming together. To do. Um, so, working on that and trying to trying to shape our own vision from the from the thoughts and minds of, of the staff uh, here in Bethel. Uh, the second is to align our work with the strategic plan for the supervisory union. Uh, that gets pretty detailed if you if you're able to follow the link and, and want to read more about that. Um, but an example, the strategic plan is working on the literacy initiative, uh, for example. Um, Goal three is working on administrative team building. Uh, we kind of just jumped right into things last summer and <coughs> painting the building and ordering new things and coming up with new signs uh, and didn't spend any time collectively on an administrative retreat like all of you do. Uh, so in many ways, the work we've done since July or since the end of June uh, has provided us with some growth in our working relationships with another, one another. Um, and uh, trying to create a more resilient and forward-looking thinking. Uh, and then finally, we've got uh, some programs uh, that we're working on, uh, which you've heard us talk about before. They include uh, the music program that we've been working on, uh, outdoor program is another one, and uh, kind of MPSS. looking at the MPSS, looking at the uh, math program 
uh, that pilot work that's starting this year is another. Is that, is that what MTSS is? Or what is no, MTSS stands for multi-tiered support system. Uh, that's what happens when you come late to the open house. <laughs> we talked about that in the, with the oh, parent cool. open house. Um, and it's, this, it's the multi-tiered system of support. Of support. So it, they're, it, they're the systems we're putting in place to provide help to students. Uh, and with each campus has a MTSS coordinator now, um, in addition to the, the resources we had last year, um, with the intention of being able to meet students' needs and help them find um, support within the classroom and at a universal level, but also uh, beyond the walls of the school, so helping to make connections uh, with community resources that may be able to, to help out with student needs that go above and beyond what we're able to provide for within the walls of the school. And I reviewed, I looked over the homeschool letter. Um, that looks awesome. Has it gone out yet? No. Okay. Looking forward to that. Thank you. Again? We have hard copies if you want to see one. Did you build some? Um, you pass these over? Actually, we'll pass them all over. Perfect. Thank you. Is that the whole report, nothing but the report? Well, I mean, there's more. In there. I have. I printed out the tuition student enrollment reports. It's something that oh, yeah, the, yeah. the board had asked for last month, and uh, it's an interesting read. Yes. Um, you know, these, these numbers are hard to pin down because we, we may think we have a student in the system, um, but maybe they weren't here when ADM was counted, so they may not actually count uh, when we actually come to counting students. Uh, but by the numbers that we've got today, one of our best guess is we think we've gained 14 tuition students over last year, which is really happy, positive news. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are pretty sure we have nine additional resident students over last year. So we've got a total of 23. Is that right? Uh, that doesn't add up quite right. But. Um, Oh, so maybe it's 23 instead of 33? Uh, no, it, it comes to, uh, it's, we have a gain of 14 tuition students. So our total number of tuition students in the soup, in the district is now 33. So we had 19 tuition okay. students last year. We have 14 additional over last year. So that's a, a nice pickup. All right, yes. Um, and on top of that, there are nine additional students who live in Bethel or South Royalton. Um, you know, again, that's by, by our gust. And that's October 1st? Uh, yeah. October 15th. Yeah, some of those numbers are from earlier today, but some of them are, are pre-October 1st, so uh, it's kind of a mix. Uh, but if we, we've just a kind of cocktail napkin calculation, uh, we look at each student, additional student, sixteen thousand dollars. That should be a revenue increase of over half a million dollars. Uh, that, that should help out in the budgeting process as we look to next year. So, and for drilling down, there's twenty three more students in the middle school than there was last year. That doesn't mean we have twenty three more students. It means we. <coughs> are stretching our middle school capacity. We have between 18 and 20 kids on average in every class. It's right where we want to be. That's largely because of a huge sixth grade class. <laughs> largely and because of the way we uh, configure our, our groups. Mm -hmm. Are we getting tuition students in middle school? Some. More than last year, same. I think it's actually down one, maybe. Mm -hmm. There's very few. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, no, it's the same on the number. first page. Actually, we moved six into the high school, <coughs> and so we only pick. We only have the one when we move forward. We have one middle school student. It looks like this year. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions about the principal's report, or any other things you'd like to highlight? Well, I'd like to point out as we go into budgeting um, that we're at the time of the year where we're thinking about classroom configurations for next year. 
and um, stemming off the <coughs> guidance from the Vermont School Quality Standards um, and the number of students you would have in a class. Um, our targets are to have a minimum of 15 students K2 per class with a max of 20 and a minimum of 18 students in grades 4 through 5 with a max of 23. Okay. So using those numbers for our planning for next year. Um, can you repeat that? It's, a, it's right in here. You don't need to type into that. It's in the notes? It's in the principal's report. Cut and paste. Or just paste it. The whole thing. Oh, okay. Not the whole thing. So you have a minimum of 15 and maximum of 20, but like when you have a grade that's 22 kids, like are you looking at combining grades to make multiple grade groups? We're looking so at can... everything. Mm -hmm. Lots of ways. Yeah, multi classrooms is a common way to accomplish that. And there's not there's some that probably small exactly fit and we'll just do our best. You know, if it's a fifth grade with twenty three kids, that's very different than a, a first grade with twenty three kids. Yeah, exactly. Well they're what they're really saying is that those days of carrying really small classes we have to look at as mm -hmm. maybe you know, in some cases like in a calculus class that might be all that are available but we have to be very thoughtful about how many we run and the whole thing. So. Yes. I, we have a large first grade calculus classes. I'll give you one. <laughs> <laughs> one more announcement. Uh, the middle school will be going to Boston to see the Lion King. Oh. The entire middle school. When's that happening? Twenty-four. They want to go. Twenty-four. Yeah, you October twenty-four. Are you take? Are you, uh, using, a a a like are you a using a school bus or are you using a like a great coach buses? That's great. Because yeah, okay. if you take the school buses, there's no school buses to do the runs. <laughs> oh my gosh! I I went to see the Lion King <laughs> with the middle school. Maybe it was two years ago or three years ago. Program in Providence. And we went to and we took a school bus, and I'm still in pain from yeah. that. <laughs> she went to. So it's a hundred and forty students. We're taking this. One. 140 students. Leaving at 8:30 a.m. and they will return at 8:30 p.m. Let me know if you need. Extra chaperones. You need less chaperones. Or more, more chaperones. Wait a minute, Matt. Tara, Tara we're, I'm taking Cooper and my mom that day, so if you want to ride, <laughs> you just got to get the day off. Yeah, I can do that. Take a sick day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there that day. <laughs> anyway, just right. so you know. Thank you. That's awesome. Okay. <coughs> um, great. Any other questions? Thank you all for all of this. I appreciate it. That brings us to action items. We've already discussed the heating system, um, the budget build, and annual meeting planning. I feel like we may need to bump that to November, given the audit coming the end of the month. Um, is yes, because a lot of the stuff that I need to report to you all and to your principals hinges on the audits. Okay, so we're going to table this until next month. Pat, if no one um, objects. Okay. Um, driver's Ed program update. I don't have any new information. I do. Okay. Yeah. So the state reimbursement rate is $71. I was able to confirm that since our last meeting. $71 per student? Per student. Okay. Right. Less indirect. What? Less indirect. Less indirect? Just be you. No. What does that mean again? So there's le it's less direct cost. So it's $71 per student, and then the direct cost seems to be the insurance total cost. Um, so the reimbursement for the last report was $327.56. Per student? No, total. Hmm. Okay, so that, so that was like that was for the summer program. It was for, this was from July one through nine thirty nineteen. This was the last report that was due on today that we filed on the second. So that was the calculations down at the bottom. It was insurance days on ninety two daily rate a dollar seven, insurance total cost ninety eight dollars and forty four cents. So reimbursable enrollments was six times seventy one dollars for a total of four hundred and twenty six dollars less the direct cost of ninety eight forty four. For a total amount of reimbursement of three twenty-seven fifty-six. 
So the reason why we wanted this was because in order to get this money, we need to let the other town's kids into our program. It does not seem worth it to have our kids not have access to our program. Correct. For 300. For 300 bucks. Uh, totally. Yeah. So let's, let's, before you guys jump on that bandwagon, let's think about this. If you're going to charge families the full amount of what it costs for the program, that's a pretty big number for a lot of poor families to swallow. Well, it's it it about seven hundred dollars a student, right? I, I don't have. I mean, we're just talking theory. about keeping it the way it is now. It just our kids have priority, and we don't get this three hundred dollars from the state. From the and state, we're not charging our students in district now, correct? Right. 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 And so we're only getting three hundred dollars reimbursed from the state, so. Right. 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 I think the big issue at our last meeting was that uh, because we're taking the, the small amount of funds, it means that any student from inside our district or outside could RSU, enroll, inside, uh, our inside our SU oh. could enroll for the uh, class and it would go seniority based on age, right? So that means that some of our own students could get bumps at a later date because of other students coming in to take the class. Mm -hmm. And so the biggest concern was making sure that our students had priority. The only way to prioritize our students and then allow others in when and if there was room would be to not accept that $71 minus insurance per student. Sounds like we're getting maybe... 300 bucks. But the other part right. of the conversation, and I believe Reed brought this in, is that other districts charge. They don't make it a an item in their budget. They allow it to be cost neutral for uh, the, the districts and allow uh, students and their families to pay what it would cost for a teacher, you know, and uh, that's probably hundreds of dollars per family. Uh, and so I, I guess I'm, I understand what you're saying as far as maybe not paying and they're, therefore not having to play by those rules. But on the other hand, if you were to take it out of your budget, like some districts have done, and charge families to do it, it's quite quite expensive to do that. Yeah, I don't think I we're don't taking think it we out of the budget. To, that's a separate we don't discussion. want to yeah, that, that would be, charge families for this. For me, that's a real equity issue. Is. However, um, I think that prioritizing our own students and having the right to do that by not accepting three hundred dollars <throat> on an eleven million dollar budget is okay with me. Well, it's probably that was just one. That was thing. only one class. So, so like how many six students were class classes? Right, but still, so it's basically so it's, it's still only talking like right. a thousand dollars a year. So right. the summer semester is due in October. The fall semester is due <coughs> in Feb on February fifteenth. So whatever's enrolled in the fall semester, and then July fifteenth is the due date for the spring semester. So depending on what you have for enrollment. And that was just the current rate for that one submission. Yeah, so it winds up being like sixty dollars per student. We currently have twenty a full class of twenty students, so we would have reimbursement of fourteen twenty mm -hmm. for the fall semester minus direct costs. Uh, and and the direct costs are about ten bucks a student. Uh, looks like insurance days on was ninety two at a daily rate of one oh seven, one dollar and seven cents. So they gave the insurance cost for this time frame of ninety eight dollars and forty four cents. So for the whole group? That's what it's I, for the okay. six here. So, still I, so that money. Money. I, I think we, we need to do a little bit more research mm -hmm. because if, if we the state underwrites the insurance for the student drivers. Right. Okay. I don't know what the, I mean, that may be what they're charging us, but I don't know what a pri if we had to use a private insurer because okay. if we use the state insurance, we have to play by the state rules, mm -hmm. then maybe it would cost us more money to have a private insurance cover our student drivers. I, I don't know. So, so we need those numbers to look at at our next meeting just to see what the scenarios are. Yeah, you can yes, say that. And the, the other question I have is how many, do we have a lot of students that are waiting? I, I believe that we got everybody in the fall that wanted to take it, uh, but I'm a little bit worried that we're going to have a bottleneck in the spring. Uh, that we, we, I think we have, more, I think we have 26 or 27 students on the wait list, uh, and only 20 spots in the spring. So, um, 
And how many are from out of our district? That's important to know how much is that impact. Yeah. And I, I haven't drilled down to that level yet. But can you have that information too by at, by next meeting so we know which students and how it's impacting if it's really our district? Yeah. And because I thought there were some students that had to be waitlisted to spring because we were folding in um, students from outside of our district. Yeah, that, that may be the case. Um, and we are a huge from. rural district, and for some families, it means a lot for students to be able to drive in terms of access to extracurriculars, jobs. Um, I just think we need to get all the information to find out how we can prioritize our own students first. Yeah, Andrew. Um, if they, like we're forced to have the program be open to all students of the SU, wouldn't it make sense to make this an SU program somehow? Okay. Um, would it be worth pointing this up at a board meeting, SU board meeting? So it's, okay. it's not just our district. Right, I mean, they're also welcome to send their students to school with us. Yeah. <laughs> and if our partners ed is... You can introduce that. I can bring I'm working that up. for them as well as I'm working for I know, I know. Well, it might be a good thing to put on our website that our members end is free to our students. What is Market. Yeah. Right. Okay. Hmm. That's interesting. I'm just worried about the equity part of it. Like Lisa said, that's sure. want to make sure that kids have the uh, opportunity to do It is the right. one thing that they Right, I mean, that's a separate discussion, though. So I, I think, well, I so, think our students will have an equitable opportunity to take driver's ed. So the, the current scenario is we have three students from the Sharon Academy who are enrolled in the driver's ed program and two homeschool students. So a quarter of, of this semester's uh, enrollment are students who are not paying any tuition other than what we get for the state. Uh, and, and our costs to run the program are a little bit over $1,000 per student. Mm -hmm. um, so and our homeschoolers are still ours though yes mm -hmm. right so I, I I would I mean we don't we don't get to count them in, in terms of our ADM but their parents pay taxes in Bethel and, and Bethel and Royalton. Royalton. right if if that's where they're from but I don't know that for sure so okay. um, they could be a tough bridge or is that something you could yeah. verify I need to look well? and do it yeah okay yeah, I haven't drill down to the level of where are the students coming from and all that yet. We also don't need to offer programs to the homeschool families if it impact if we don't have space or an instrument or a book. It's by our ability to offer it. Right. So But at this point we have that ability. Yeah, so we do it. Right. Absolutely. So for the next board meeting we're gonna have a comparison of using state funds and how that's going to look with current enrollment versus how it would what our cost could potentially be without using state funds enrolling on our own but then having to incur our own insurance and then the other thing is to assess how many students that are signed up right now that are currently in the fall fall class um, of the homeschool and the, you know we know that what's the breakdown of students that are in our district and outside of our district if they're homeschool students are they still Bethel Royalton residents right. and anything else so and then it, that for the for the fall and the spring we want the breakdown of all that just so that we can kind of look at those scenarios and see if our if our district's really being taken care of or if anybody's being left out you also uh, wanted to confirm how many, if there are, and how many kids from our district are waiting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because yeah, of that's, that thing. Mm -hmm. that's the whole Because thing. of, yeah. Yeah, as a result, based on, because if the state funded is, is accepted, then we have to do priority, prioritize based on age, right? Um, regardless of where We have to let them in. It's the prioritizing is... The only fair way to do this is by age. Can you double check with the state? Because it really makes no sense to me that the district is paying for something, but has to accept SU students. Can you make sure that they realize that this is a district program and not an SU program? Uh, I, that's how I. That's, well, that's the information that I brought to you from them. I know, yeah. but like, 
whenever we're talking about stuff, people always get the district and the supervisory union confused. And so I think it would be worth double checking just to make sure that that information is correct. Because I mean, it makes no sense to me that we're paying as a district and have to accept students from a supervisory union. So either it should be a supervisory union program, in which case, you know, getting paying for it through the SU, or it should be a district program that accepts district students. I'll, I'll dig into it a little bit more as soon as I get the budget thing to chair this week. Maybe next week. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like a 15 year old. It is. <laughs> 15 -year -old. Yes. Yeah. And we can talk about equity across the SU, but that's an SU issue, not, a, right. not right. our district issue. And, yeah, I'm not really fine worried about the sharing of students. I'm sorry. I'm worried that our students are not getting their training so that they can get back and forth to their classes and their extracurriculars. Yes. Yeah. Well, and I, I mean, I think it's okay to think about them if we have. If positions available and we're not bumping our own students. Yeah. I'm okay with it then, but if we're bumping our, I, I just think that we should have the right to take care of our own first. What do the students think? Yes. Do you think we can prioritize? Do you guys both send drivers? Yes. Bethel and Rathen? I think we should have a one-to-one -one program too, right? A car and driver oh. <laughs> okay. oh, yeah. Great. 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 Yeah. Thanks, We're trying to contain the budget. Car. <laughs> you thought I was your problem. <laughs> you got when you guys turn sixteen. I You already turned sixteen. Did you get in the drive? Is that okay? Did you have to wait? Did you know. get in? I didn't have to wait. How about Hunter's safety? Just kidding. I know that, I mean, my son, my 15 year old, was going to take it in the fall and now he's taking it in the spring, assuming he doesn't get bumped. But um, he's a February birthday boy, so I'm sure that he's. Anyway. He wanted to take it in the fall? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he would have taken it in the fall if he could have. But maybe it was a, I don't know if it was due to enrollment or if it was a scheduling thing. Um, I'm not quite clear on that. Thank you. But I know that he needs to take it in the spring because he's planning on driving. And I'd love it. Where this all started was right. that Sharon Academy was asserting that we had to provide a program for them. Yeah, right. Well, we yeah. Don't. That makes sense. And that's why I made the phone call to find out exactly where the, stuts, the state stood on this whole thing. So, because their program, they had to charge the full rate to their parents, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, hundreds of dollars, and uh, they weren't getting, uh, you know, uh, credited for some of that, even though those kids uh, lived here. And uh, so, basically, that was the issue, and that's why I called. And the other thing, is our district charging the other districts when the students come in? Well, we don't, because, okay. Well, I wonder, I wonder if that's a whole other category of students. That is another those. opportunity, if, I guess. You could probably charge them something, yeah. you know. I, I don't know. I mean, well, well, no, I think you said because that's the kind of conversation I have to have this state again. What if we were to do a surcharge for those kids that weren't, yeah. were living in the SU but weren't going to the host school? Just make sure you clarify it was just the district. Program, right, program. a district versus so, an so SU. Like, I don't see what living in the SU has to do with it because it's not an SU program. No, because if it was a state thing, it would be any district anywhere. Right. I wonder right. if there's a, a nuance here, I mean, and I don't know if this is the case or not, if you have a, a South Royalton resident who's attending the Sharon Academy, um, yeah. I mean, that which would be a different thing than a Sharon student resident attending Sharon Academy. Mm -hmm. right. I could see that, but I don't know to what extent that is. <laughs> We're going to need a whole flow chart to figure out how to handle each student. All right. Um, More personal. Than so, Reed, you're clear on what we're looking for. Uh, I I think I've got most of it. Yeah. Okay. We'll right. do my best, and we can keep fine tuning what. I think we're going to make this phone call together. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm just going to take a b back and forth and think of a few different scenarios and mm -hmm. how to handle that. Okay. okay. 
So we're expecting the audit to wrap up next week, and we'll have a presentation at the executive board meeting on October 28th. So they say. Is there any additional information? It's been a very detailed learning experience. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can I, uh, since, since this is the last budget item, uh, the, the last time we talked about budget kind of collectively, it felt like we, the principals, the administration was given some guidance budget wise. Um, and I know when we came to the table last year, we, we came with, this is what we think would be optimal amount of money for us to spend to put the programs in the place that we feel the students and staff uh, feel like we need. Uh, and then we came back and we cut, and then we went around and around and we cut again. And we still had a, a maximum tax increase for the town of the residents of right. South Royalton. Um, and we, we know some assumptions like health insurance is going to go up by 12.9%. Mm -hmm. So we've got, we're going to have some upward pressure on the budget, even if uh, all the programs stay the same. And so I'm, I'm wondering if the board has uh, more clarity for us on what, what you'd like us to be looking at. I mean, we, we had that list of cuts that uh, we didn't talk about much last January. Should we be coming to the table with some of those as part of the budget uh, as a beginning spot? Or what, what do you yeah. think? Speaking for myself, I think we promised the voters this time that there wasn't going to be this, this upcoming year. And so we need to look at what revenue we have. And you know, if, if we can accommodate everything under that revenue, then I think Great. And if we can't, then we need to look at what we need to do to make it so that we can. But uh, I don't think we can do tax increases this year. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, well, I mean, no, I, I agree with that. Though, that I don't think we can do a tax increase. But also, we, we did start a lot of new programs, and we need to look at them and make sure if some are not really being utilized, then. You know, maybe there's some we can cut out if they're not really that popular. <coughs> you know, because it doesn't hurt to revisit some of these programs just to make sure. I mean, if it's. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, the, the, I guess the tricky part for us is at this point, we are looking at expenditures only and we don't know what the revenue side of things is. Uh, and really have to wait a while. So maybe it makes sense to just kind of keep programs as they are, uh, knowing that down the road when we, we have some insight into what the revenue side will look like. I think that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't I, add anything. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're at a place where we can add anything. I think that when tax bills went out, people are still struggling um, to wrap their heads around which part was the school increase versus the town increase versus impacted by the common level of appraisal. Um, and so I think it's all a challenge. Um, and I think that we can demonstrate the greater value that we've achieved um, for those increases. And we know that taxes would have gone up without the merger. Um, and so I think those are things that are important to note, but over the past two years, Royalton has gone right up to the cap each of those years, and we just can't do that again. Um, so I anticipate this will be a far harder budget cycle. I don't know if that's what you were looking for, but... I kind of knew all of that, but yeah. it's uh, good to have I heard it again. Yeah. And I think your plan of developing the budget as is, and then we see where the revenue's at, and we'll adjust for accordingly. Yeah. That seems reasonable. Yeah, and maybe on the sidelines, have some ideas of if there was more money, where would it go, or what would you do? But, um, you know. Or would, where would you make cuts if we need to? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you know, we, we're already discussing that. Right. And trying to prioritize them. I mean, with insurance first. going up 12% in a way, I mean, that's eating 12. away 9. opportunities. 
13 percent. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, we also how do can, have how the, can, the, mm -hmm. just, yeah, tuition students added, so hopefully there was a balance out. Mm -hmm. you know. And our ADA, yeah. yeah. our By the way, I don't, I don't know whether I told you, but uh, we're yeah. being told that by December 1st we'll know what the negotiations at the state level is as far as health insurance. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. um, that should be in time to impact yeah. the mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so we already did enrollment, enrollment and tuition students as part of the principal's report. Sprinter van update? Okay, I have no new information about that. Okay. Preschool update. They all fit in the sprinter van. <laughs> <laughs> Safely seat belted? I thought that the question on that was how many was in the enrollment, so we put that on that chart. Okay. Okay. All right. Is there any new planning moving forward for next year? Not until we do the um, screening. I think then we'll know more. But we need to know what we're dealing with. Well, I mean, what we were looking at though was making it so that there can be a morning and afternoon. A similar thing, separate classroom for morning and afternoon and full day. Right, and, and right now there's kind of a limited program. space in the road seven, and I, I feel like we have more students. Than we can have it. And possible after school programs, summer programs, so those kids aren't mm -hmm. trying to find daycare placements where there aren't any. Mm -hmm. You know, part of the question for um, you know expanding or, or what the configuration is for full day or part day for three and four year olds is also going to depend on our overall budget picture and you know if it requires additional standing right. staffing if we can afford that mm -hmm. I, I do think that that would be a priority for me though is making sure that you know i, I just, yeah we can have a separate discussion about this you know, i don't i think we need to make sure that we can accommodate all the preschoolers who want to come because that impacts our budget mm -hmm. so you know mm -hmm. we're trying to end up turning five kids away or something like that then or five kids don't come because they didn't work out to go to Bethel or whatever then that's <coughs> money that could have gone to an extra staffer or something like that mm -hmm. to accommodate. And I think that it's been proven in Sharon and other places that parents will pay extra for the after school and the, and the summer care so those programs may help pay for themselves. Mm -hmm. right. They're a little bit more budget neutral than others. Thank you. Um, that brings us to our next public comment. Hi, did you miss me? Um, I'm actually just going to add on a little bit to what you said, which is, I mean, you and I spent some time beating down rumors on Facebook about a month ago. Uh, I do not recommend. Um, but I think it was effective, um, and you never know who else is listening in metaphorically speaking so you always tell yourself that you're trying to put more good into the world than bad um, but I do think that with every year with another budget jump um, the royalty population probably Bethel too um, gets more cynical about the whole business um, so I think working on that preschool program not just to say we're asking for more money but we're accommodating more kids but to also say we're asking for more money and we're looking for revenue this is going to make us money. We're not just asking for more money year after year. And by the way, we're sending the entire middle school to the Lion King, which I know is a good deal and should be done and is not actually going to impact the budget that much. But I also know people I will not name down the street who will say, I can't believe they're asking for more money when they took the entire middle school on a trip. I can hear it. We didn't bring it back. I know, I know. They never they, listen to that part either. I will also say they asked for half of the cost of the ticket. Oh, yeah, no. And, and, so but that's, that's what I'm, I'm saying. I, you know, I'm not saying it's not a very, I'm 100% in support of that program. We talked about it at the boosters meeting. It's great. It's cool. I love it. Um, I don't sound like I love it right now because I'm on a roll. Don't take it personally. Uh, but you know, everybody in this room knows that people can hitch on to dumb things and be dumb about them. Um, everyone will quote me on this next week. Uh, and so we need to make sure, and I, it's, it's kind of sad that this is where we are, but it's also good that this is where we are, is that 
if we find good things we can talk about in terms of we are not we are working to stay revenue neutral we are working to bring in income look at the new tuition students we brought in that is also you know kind of symbolic and powerful and so we need to remember to not uh, rest so to speak if we can you know soak Sharon Academy for the students for driver's ed that they want for free just as a random example I took out of nowhere you know but but to really make sure because some of these things are relatively small but they can be very symbolic and people can get hung up on them um, which you know on, in some ways is really unfortunate and in some ways it's just human nature it's much easier to wrap your head around a bus trip than a multi-million dollar budget I have a lot easier time wrapping my head around a bus trip than the whole budget because it's big and there's a lot of moving parts and so um, I think working towards the preschool with the aftercare is such a net good it serves the people who live here. It's a potential recruitment for more families to live here because childcare is such a crunch and it hurts our economy that we don't have adequate childcare. I mean, there are no two ways about it. And so I, I feel like if we crack that nut and make that work, and I know, Bruce, you've talked about this all the time, so, so we're singing in harmony at the moment. Uh, if we crack that nut, we can really do a huge net good um, as, long, as well as kind of quote unquote looking good. Um, I think, you know, there's so many families I know who benefit from that, and then there's families who might come here and benefit from that, which would mean, again, more tax base, more community, more kids, more money from the state, win, 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 win. You can turn away from me now. And I think I was lurking on that, um, a lot of those uh, discussions on, on this, on the Facebook and it seemed like some of the people were questioning, you know, why we have so many principals. You know, that whole thing that at our last board meeting we were talking about, the board was going to work with um, finding some existing documents and also working with Bruce in creating something in writing to acknowledge why we have four principals, how it's changed from what it was before, just so that when we get those, uh, those occasional questions, and people needing clarity, we can hand them a fact sheet. We can hand them some information and, and be proactive and also not find ourselves being in the defensive because I think that what we've made is a really good decision, but to have it in writing to justify is going to be, um, I think, productive and nurturing and, and keep things on the right track instead of, you know, I, I wasn't about to hop in on that. If I had had something, I would have, like, sent an attachment and then they would have had like something that we all you know a document that we've all created that we um, have checked off on but I think those kinds of fact sheets can be really useful especially when budget conversations happen mm -hmm. so I guess I would encourage us as a board and to work with Bruce to like pull this that information that together. I, have together. That, I have that information I get it from well, can you send it to us so that we can start reading it? Because I think when we start having budget discussions, I think it'll be great for us to have that information ready, ready to launch to anybody that wants it, that wants to ask those questions. Um, so before we move on to executive session, um, I'm just wondering about future agenda items while everybody's still here. Yes, Andrew. Um, one thing we kind of have on the plate that we haven't addressed in a while is the um, community engagement boards. And I think we left it where we were going to come up with like how the community members are selected and approved. Wasn't that? Or a plan was being drafted. I think drafted. We, we presented it and we were looking for feedback. And I think that's where that is. Right, and it's kind of stalled. So we need to make sure that either we discuss that tonight or get that on a future agenda. I, I think we should try and get it as soon as possible. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, like I don't know that it needs to be something that we approve or anything like that. But. Right. Well, I, I thought about that. It isn't the board actually a representative of the town anyways? So why do we need another board? Well, so this would be a resource so for the, well, so like, a resource for the principals to get feedback directly from parents on. That's what we are. 
I don't have any kids in the high school oh, right now. And well, I don't have any in grade school either, but right, so why we need another panel to do what we're already doing. One of the things when the merger happened was that we were going from <coughs> two separate boards down to one, which decreased the total number of uh, community representatives. And so there was worry that there was going to be less um, community engagement. So this is a way of getting people involved. And you know, when you're actually involved in giving feedback and thinking about something, you're much more invested in it than if you're you know, just kind of sending your kid and mm -hmm. other people are taking care of it. You know? so, mm -hmm. You know, I think it could be a good resource for the principals to have, you know, they don't come to us with every single thing that they want to do, like, and you can also have, we were talking about different councils that would have, like, more specific focuses on things, you know, than we generally do here. Like, we're kind of more of a overall structure thing, whereas, you know, I think it would be useful to reach out and see if we get more people engaged. Um, one of the things I see as a benefit is that the more people we have coming into our school positive about what they see, feeling like their voice is being heard, um, they're going to go back and talk to their friends and their families. And I think it just builds a greater community around the school and more support. And we're six people. Um, and I think we do our best at communicating the things we love about our schools um, and the things that we wish were, were done differently. And so I think having more voices at the table is really positive. It's also was in the um, articles of the brain, so. Right, mm -hmm. and right, well, that I mean, came up yeah, last March also. I mean, we can try. It just doesn't yeah. seem like anybody's really that interested in showing up to work. Well, I will say, um, I didn't know this bang this drum a lot. I would love to have more communication still. We get some blog stuff from Reed. I know he's busy. I not want to paint any, point any fingers to anyone. I want to give credit where due with that is. But like the open house, we didn't have a bad attendance, but we didn't have the attendance we used to have when we had a weekly newsletter that really encouraged people to come to stuff. Um, we just didn't. Um, and, uh, you know, the MTSS program, if you weren't there, you didn't hear about it. And I was in the meeting with the senior parents for the seniors, so I didn't hear about it anyway, even though I did come. You know I came, you saw me. Same um, here, same year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> we, we, we were doing our job, man. Um, and so I, I really, I know I bang this drum all the time, but more communications on the website, on the, on the Facebook page, and I know we are, you guys are tight on staff, and I know you have other stuff to do, and I know all that stuff, but like it becomes a self-perpetuating cycle that people don't come out to things because they don't know about things, and then they come out to even fewer things because they don't feel like they're being reached out to, and then the budget goes down. That's not the only bad thing about it, but you know, that's just one thing since we were already talking about that. Um, and I just want there to be, you know, Ingrid gets that newsletter out. Hell, high water, natural disaster for guidance. And so I think especially senior parents in the room would, would, would say, you know, that's something that you expect, you get used to, you read it, at least I read it. Um, and to have something else that comes out regularly, semi-regularly, or even just, you know, more Facebook events and announcements mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. You know, the Facebook, Facebook stuff is usually announcements. They're not events, so you can't RSVP to them, so Facebook doesn't remind you about it. And it, like I said, I worry that it becomes a self-perpetuating cycle where we get more and more parents who are not going to show up because they don't feel like they're being asked to show up. And, it, and so it will spiral downward. So thanks for looking meaningfully at me at me. You knew you were gonna get that. You know, we're all we're all on the same page. Okay, thank you. Okay. We were talking about future um, agenda topics. Yes. And um, we could have a communication update as a future agenda topic. Awesome. What is it? Communication, communication update. update. Um, I also feel like the audit will be on our next agenda. Mm -hmm. um, and perhaps the first glance draft of the budget. 
I think my timeline, so fair. my timeline stays true, but. Okay. There's always that caveat. That right. If I get delayed by one thing. Yep. Well, that would be what we asked for, because it'll be the November meeting. The November meeting, that would be on target with where we've wanted to be since March. You've got driver's um, ed on there? Mm -hmm. um, I have not yet, so we need driver's ed. Um, and that's also scheduled to be the meeting where we invite Pam, Carmen, and Allison to begin talking about um, our structure for the annual meeting. So. Okay, and I'm happy to reach out to those three. Okay, um, so we'll enter executive session at. Can I ask a question before yeah. we do that? Um, you've always um, provided some guidance about our student representatives and whether or not they need to get out of here at a decent hour to be able to go home and do their homework uh, or or what. But I yeah. thought maybe maybe what the board. Uh, their contribution should be, and, and I would think it's student issues uh -huh. uh, to bring to us. I, I, I don't know, do you want to provide any of that guidance to them since this is their first meeting? Um, do you feel comfortable providing a student update for next meeting? We'll add that to the agenda as well. Yeah. Okay. Great. So students are truly preschool to 12th grade. Mm -hmm. There might be some middle school kids or elementary. So we're going to call this a student update. There's a student update back there. I'm our student representative. Sure. All right. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, when we enter executive session, that's just the voting members of the board typically. So you can. And anybody you invite. Uh, and anybody we invite. But typically, because of confidentiality, we wouldn't invite student representatives. So. So for the, Thank you. Um, just a question for the notes. Are we going to ask for uh, uh, an up the communication <coughs> update? Is that going to include the discussion around community engagement board? Or should that be a separate item for the future? David, I was responding to that. So that would, that would encompass it? Yeah, David, would that, the, um, for the communication update, is that going to encompass uh, Thank you, ladies. the community I'm engagement the board and the plans for? No, okay. Is that a separate item? Okay. I was thinking of a website. Okay. Easier this way, though. Uh, I think.